I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I want to talk about a really important topic that a lot of you should probably take to heart, and that is the idea of vacation investments. What does it mean? How does it affect you? And what does this emotional state end up doing to you if you're not watching out for it? We're going to get to that on this beautiful day out on the beach right after that bump. All right, let's hope the wind isn't too bad. I'm out here on the Pacific Ocean. It doesn't get much more beautiful than this. We have a great sunset going on. It's not one of those golden ones, but it is one of those very just, it's lovely. It's lovely out here. And uh, so this, I figured the beach was the perfect place to have this particular talk. And that is when you go on vacation and everyone does this, right? So I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to all of us. Everybody has this emotional reaction. And that is you go on vacation to some beautiful paradise place, right? So a ton of people, this is Disney World that it happens to. To a ton of people, it's the beach. To some people, it's the mountains. It could be all kinds of places, Europe, Latin America, could be Southeast Asia. Everyone has a different spot. Everyone has their, their little piece of travel paradise. But Disney World's a great example because Disney World's artificial. It's not like, it's not like the beach. Like real people live here on the beach, and uh, but not a lot. Right, just a few. It has a lot of drawbacks living on a beach. There's reasons you don't actually want to live there in many cases, but reasons why some people do, like it varies. But uh, when you come out and uh, you, you come on vacation, right? And think about people in Disney World. That's the really is a great example. About 30 years ago, Disney figured out that this, people would come on vacation, they'd go to Disney World, they'd have an amazing time. They'd be all pumped up because they're like, I'm on vacation, I'm, I'm gone with normal life. I'm just enjoying this so much. And immediately they would think, I wish I could live here. And trust me, I've been to Disney World. I want to live there. Seems amazing, right? All those restaurants, all those things. But you forget how much it costs. You forget that there's no jobs there. You forget that there's all this, like you can't get away from it. You're trapped. Anyway, so they built this whole vacation thing that you can do in Disney World. You can buy uh, vacation homes and you can live year round inside Disney World. Not very many people do this, but you can in theory. And they make tons of money from this. And there's this mentality that you're on vacation and people just lose their minds and they decide that that's where they want to live. And then most people end up regretting it. Like it's a pretty bad deal overall. It is not normally where you actually want to live. It doesn't make sense. And you go on vacation to a beach especially and people, everybody has the same things. I'm going to buy a house on this beach. And they forget that owning a house and living on a beach and dealing with that all the time is not the same in any way whatsoever as uh, if you are uh, uh, vacationing, right? It's a totally different mentality. It's a totally different set of things going on. And when you're on vacation, you're enjoying life in a completely different way. So you get a different perspective. You, you picture the place that you're in completely differently. All right, so I'm out walking the beach. We're taking a quick break from my topic because I just ran into Davidson who watches the show and saw me from the rocks right over here and came down to say hi. So feel free to say hi. Hello, hello everybody. I'm telling you, watch this guy's video. He's the reason I'm in Nicaragua right now, especially in Leon, especially Las Bonitas. He sold me this country, sold me this city, and now I'm at the beach. And I met him right here in Saw Shot. This guy is the real deal. Watch his videos, watch his videos. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> watch his videos. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate everything you do for the community. This is awesome. This is awesome. Well, thank you. Appreciate it's you. awesome Appreciate running into you. people on the beach. Like I was just out filming and he came down from the rocks. And I'm like, oh, someone knows me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to see you guys. Watch the video. This guy's awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. So when you're out and you, so you have this, this drive, right? When you're on vacation and like your mind is just in a completely different place. It's like euphoric state of everything is great. And you forget that you're spending extra money because you're on vacation and you forget that you're staying in a hotel and you're paying for people to clean your laundry or, or clean your room or just whatever. And you forget that you don't have to go to work. You forget that like you've checked out a life for the most part and it puts your brain in a really dangerous state. And, and you, and it's fantastic. Like we all need it. We need to disconnect. We got to relax. We got to enjoy life for sure. But when we're on vacation, especially when we do something like go to the beach, something like really outside our everyday, of course, some of you live on a beach, it doesn't apply to you, but you know what I mean? You're going someplace amazing. You're doing something super interesting. And, uh, and when you do this, 
you're in a position where you're very likely to end up just falling in love with the place that you are. And when that's happening, right, one of the things that just about everybody has happened to them is suddenly you'll decide, well, I should buy a house here. I should get an apartment here. I should get a condo, a timeshare, or even more commonly, I should invest here. This is a reaction that nearly everyone has. Now, most people don't have disposable income enough that they actually act on that and go do it. But we all have this a moment at least, if not a long period of time, where we're really seriously thinking about maybe this is something I should do. I want to enjoy this so much more. And we all have, most of us have, this feeling of like, okay, if a hotel is this nice, a house that we own will be so much nicer. But of course, that's not always true. A house we have to take care of, a house we worry about in the storm, a house we, we have to pay for the insurance and there's all those little things and we have to be involved. We can't just walk away and not worry about it and enjoy a day on the beach or whatever. So we have to be tempered in the way that we think about it. But this creates, and, and for those of us who live in paradise, you know, uh, uh, paradise locations, is so many people come down and are like, well, I'm gonna buy here. And you're like, that could be great, but have you really investigated? Like, are you really thinking through what that means? And it becomes an area. So, so here in Nicaragua, we get a little bit of it. This is a truly amazing beach, so we get a bit. But if you really wanna see this effect happen, look at Costa Rica. So many more people vacation there. So much more of the country is built around tourism that they have a really strong effect there of people coming in and making what is in reality a pretty rash decision. Not that you shouldn't move to Costa Rica, not that you shouldn't come to Nicaragua, absolutely fantastic locations, but there's a really high rate of people making really quick decisions to spend a lot of money because places that are like this are very expensive generally, at least compared to say just a, a kilometer away inland, uh, a little ways away from the tourism infrastructure, things get really cheap really quickly. But when you come to the beach, you're going to pay a huge premium. And, and, and just buying a house, like that's one thing. That's a lot on its own, but it's, it's only so much. But the bigger thing is so many people say, well, it would be the most amazing thing if I could support myself here. So I'm going to start a business or buy a business in this location. And the thing you have to understand is that essentially all people have this reaction. This is not unique to you. This is not a specialty thing. This is the assumed reaction that everybody is going to have this sudden reaction that says, I want to have a business here. And, and the businesses you're likely to want are the same as everyone else. Restaurants, bars, hotels, surf shops, uh, fish shops, fish and tackle shops, you name it, those kinds of things, things that service tourists. You basically say, well, I'm a tourist here. I would like these things. I'm sure everyone else would too. The problem is, is that one, those things don't exist there already because they're probably not a good business. And two, you probably aren't thinking through all those things. There's all the regular reasons for business and why that doesn't work. But it's really important to understand that absolutely every tourist is coming through in every touristy location and having those same feelings all the time. It is so unbelievably common. It is so the norm. It is not the, the special thing. When I was a kid, we used to vacation in Bar Harbor, Maine all the time. We loved it. It's very different than here, but it's still, it's, it's an idyllic uh, vacation spot with beautiful Atlantic Ocean views and cold, rocky, uh, a North Atlantic kind of misty vibe going on. It was beautiful and had great food. And it was just, it was a great place to go every other summer as a kid. And my parents went really close to buying a diner or kind of a family restaurant, like diner-ish kind of place that did breakfast there in Bar Harbor. And uh, it was exactly that. Would it have been a good business move? Almost certainly not. Was there any way to compete with the people who were already there? Why would the guy have been selling it if it was any good on its own? I think there's a million things wrong. But what drew us to that location? This incredible desire to live in the place that we liked to vacation. And that's completely natural. And there's reasons to consider it. But like, I love Nicaragua. I never vacationed here, never once. I moved here, sight unseen, okay, that's pretty dramatic, uh, to investigate the place after having lived in Panama and loving that. But the feeling of wanting to live in Nicaragua and, and having it be real practical and the desire to vacation here 
just as like a fun vacation, while you can like both, is unlikely. It is rare that you actually want to make a home in the place you want to vacation. You probably still want to vacation in more or less the same places as you always did. And you want to find a home that's someplace better than where you are now. All that's true. But it's rare that you're going to want to live where you want to vacation. And when you do, it is really rare that the idea of actually having a business there will make sense because we all picture something very, very different than reality. So when we're on vacation and we think about opening a business, the thing that we're thinking is that somehow we're going to be able to earn an income while acting like we're on vacation. And that's just not reality in most cases. People who try to do that, and I live on a beach and I know people who live a very vacationy lifestyle and run businesses here, but the thing that really stands out is that they make extremely little money and often they don't earn enough to live at the standard that most people are expecting when they say they want to do this. In reality, they're earning insanely little and barely able to survive, but they do it because they love the vacation lifestyle. And for some people that is valid. And so some people put that effort into it. They just want to live that vac and so it's real, right? We all kind of have this feeling, but some people actually action it and that's fine if that really works for you. But for most people, that's going to be a fail. So you wanna be really careful about that, that you're not letting vacation brain influence the way you're looking at, especially a business opportunity. Simply buying a house, especially a vacation house, in the place you like to vacation, that's different. If you're really sure that that's the place you wanna go, like here in, in Las Benitas, it would make a lot of sense for a lot of people to own beautiful vacation homes here, and yeah, come spend weeks, months, most of a year here, and go back to your work or whatever, life wherever, that works out just fine. And your vacation is just longer, you go back to the same place, you can have it set up just the way you like, whatever, that can work out perfectly. But when it comes to having uh, a business and you're looking at this, it's so hard to separate the idea of I'm on vacation and I'm as far from business as I can normally get, as I can reasonably get, and then say the thing I want to do is flip this and I want to see this beautiful beach, this gorgeous view, this roiling ocean, and instead of seeing it as vacation and the place to escape, I wanna see it as the place where I go to the office, where I'm going to, I don't know, flip burgers, cook a pizza, pour a beer. There's some things, if you could make a really good living, just pouring some beer and talking to people while they hang out on the beach, yeah, that's not bad. But everybody has that dream. And because everybody has that dream, there's so much competition that it's all but impossible. Anybody would, if that market existed, would jump on that opportunity. Who wouldn't sling beers and make a good living if you could do that and call paradise your home? You have all day to enjoy the beach, all day to just sit and relax, you know, pour some beers at night. And if you could make good money doing that, then you'll just hire someone to do it. But again, like if that was possible, if that was plausible, everybody would be trying it. People who can barely afford it would be like, well, we're gonna do it. And if it makes enough money, then I'll hire someone Then I can open a second one. Like, it's just so easy if it was like, it's hard to describe. Like the reason that most people make money at work is because you're doing a job that people don't really wanna do, right? That's, that's kind of why you get paid. And when you come to paradise and say, okay, I wanna have the lifestyle that everybody wants and people would fight for and people will be jealous of and i'm gonna not have the downsides that people assume are, are associated with it not being able to make very much money not sure how to put food on the table uh needing to go to an office deal with all that stuff if you, if you could come up with that amazing combination everybody would jump on it and and it, those those positions would be gone instantly all right it, it just it doesn't really exist because everyone's fighting for it so we're all emotionally convinced that when we're in paradise, and your paradise could be different. It could be a mountaintop in, in Tennessee. It could be, you know, skiing in the Swiss Alps. Like it, everyone's different. But that place that, that you love to go, that you like to get away to, maybe, maybe having a home there could work out if you really think about it. And it's not impossible to have a business there. 
the more a place is a great vacation spot for more people, the less likely a business is going to be something that is viable, right? There's more people competing for it, more people always testing the waters, pun not intended. But if you take a place like this where everybody wants to be, there is no limit to the number of people who wish they could find a way to be here. And many of the people who are here and have enough finances that they don't need to work also think that you know, having a bar, having a restaurant, having some kind of small business to keep them busy sounds fantastic. And so you have both people who are looking to actually make a living and people who just like to stay busy already taking up every possible reasonable position. Every Like right now, it is so beautiful out here. Every bar is essentially empty. Every restaurant is essentially empty. I just I drove past right over here is Puesto del Sol. Absolutely fantastic Italian food. If you're out here, go eat there. Help support them. Great people. But they're empty right now. Right? They're a destination restaurant. People drive out here just to eat there, and they're empty. Right? I just came from the simple. Right? They got live music. They, they have a huge party every Tuesday night. There's some people there, but like 15? Like, it's pretty lean. I'm walking past places. They're all empty. There's a handful you can see how few people are out on the beach right the weather is gorgeous the sunset is gorgeous the ocean is gorgeous like this is it's not good for surfing it's really good for walking and a little bit of swimming like this is just so nice and yet there's so like how would you make money right you can't say if you sold a beer to every human out here you wouldn't keep the lights on so so the business angle is so difficult and and that vacation brain leads us so far astray. We lose sight of reality. We lose all grip on, on how to make money, what would make business succeed, how to think about these things. So, and, and this doesn't, yeah, we're talking about Nicaragua right here. And uh, oh, the sunset's just getting so good. We gotta, oh, that's fantastic. Even on a cloudy day, it's so beautiful out here. Even if you're going to a totally different place, this effect just happens everywhere to basically everyone. So yeah, ignore the fact that we're in Nicaragua. Talk about your paradise, your perfect place, unless it's a completely unique thing and no one else wants to go there. Unless your business idea has nothing to do with tourism, you're basically going down a path that not just other people have done, but an essentially unlimited number of people are thinking about wishing they could do, wondering if they're willing to make the sacrifices to make it happen, have probably already tried it and probably failed. That's the thing. There's such a string of ongoing business failures, such a string of, there's a pipeline of people who are dreaming of doing it, people who are trying to find a way to do it, people who have tried it once in a blue moon actually succeeding and so many just failing over and over again. If those people, instead of failing at those businesses, and they, if they just took some savings and, and lived frugally in paradise, they might be able to stay in paradise much longer, do much better, and then actually enjoy it instead of struggling and going through the stress of, of failure, of losing a business, of having a business not make it. You don't have to do that. You can actually just take those resources and go farther without doing that. So that's kind of my advice. Reconsider carefully the idea of starting a business just because you love a place that you vacation. I'm not, not saying you shouldn't kick it around. I'm not saying you shouldn't look for a unique opportunity, but everyone's looking for those unique opportunities. Be super wary. And I also want to point out that this effect is so common, is so well known, that it is used as the basis for a lot of scams. A lot of con artists, especially in very touristy areas, are going to target people who are on vacation and try to sell them on ideas of investment. Uh, especially, so houses, yes, of course we know what's going on there. There's a house for sale. They'd like you to buy it. Okay. They'd like, okay. But business, it's so easy to get people to think about investing, to think about buying a business or buying into a business in a paradise location 
in a tourist location, in a place where everyone's in vacation brain mode because they know you're in spend, spend, spend mode. You're a big spender, your, your, your brain is, is thinking that way. It's not, thing, it's not being frugal, it's not doing business analysis, it is not considering what actually makes sense for you, and, and it really emotionally wants to find a way to tie you to this vacation location, right? If I'm down here on the beach, this is funny because I, I have a house down here, right? I have businesses down here, and every time I visit the beach, because I don't live here day to day, I have the same vacation feel. Like I'm on vacation for the evening. Yeah, it's just the evening. But I'm on vacation for the evening and I have a, I should invest more. I should buy more things. I should do more. Why? I don't need to, right? But that's the way your brain goes when you come down to a place like this. It's like you want to find more ways to be tied to it. You want to be more associated. And that's, that's a very dangerous place. And people will prey on that all the time. So be extra vigilant, not just of your own desire to create you will convince yourself to, to invest in something, right? So be wary of that, but also be super wary that people are going to target you knowing that you are vulnerable when you're in a place like this. So that is, that is my warning to you. It's a real thing. When you come to places like this, you just got to be aware, but also be aware that it's normal. We all do it. So it's not unique to you, but that's why it's effective as a, as a way to, to target people because everyone knows you're likely to give into it. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you from beautiful Nicaragua tomorrow. And uh, now's your chance to click on one of those videos that pops up on the screen. That tells the algorithm that you love the show and helps YouTube know that it should recommend it more often.